Who's your favorite water boy? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I think Becky, probably. Becky and Kevin. <laughs> water, water person for Becky. Oh, well, wait, you that does it for you. things that we remember. Did you guys help? <laughs> <laughs> Becky was the wrong answer. Are you ready, big dog? I'm ready. Did we're I ready. tell you what I'm we're ready. doing? Oh. Nope. <laughs> Welcome to Kansas QB, a podcast about growing up in rural Kansas, hosted by two former high school quarterbacks. And now, here are your manly hosts, Steve Jewell and Tyler Martin. Yee-haw! Right em, cowboy. <laughs> growing up in the cornfields of the Sunflower State, we were inseparable. Brothers from different mothers who also happened to be sisters. Our moms, not us. Decades later, he's in Iowa. I'm in Missouri, but we'll always have Kansas, and we'll always be the QB. Howdy, folks, and welcome to the show. I'm Steve. He's not Tyler. I'm Mark. And today's <laughs> episode is entitled Marks of Midway, Part 4. Now, after our last episode, Uncle Mark, Mike Hubble was impressed that Tyler ran so fast in high school and college and texted me about it later and said, was he really that fast? Wow. Since Tyler isn't here, because he's got something else going on, and I've got you instead. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about him, since there's nothing he can do to stop us. Um, how fast was Tyler in high school? Uh, he was he was he was pretty speedy. He's yeah, one of our fastest guys. Well, he he holds several of the records there: 100, 200, 400. I think he broke all of Todd Cottle's records in track. So yeah, he's pretty speedy. All right, so in our conversation, this is great. I, we may never even get to what we're actually supposed to talk about today. Let's talk about Tyler. Uh, so in our last episode, Tyler, we were talking about the all-time Midway team going up against the all-time St. Joe Christian team. And in oh, yeah. that, Tyler said, he said, the, the, one of the main problems with that is I don't know if I would get on the field because, you know, Todd Cottle would probably be the quarterback. So I let's sell this once and for all. You coached them both. Who's your quarterback, Tyler Martin or Todd Cottle? Oh man, that's that's Todd. You can't argue Todd's success. He's kind of like Tom Brady, right? He's got all those uh, championships under the bre- under his belt, and he had a, definitely had the it factor. And and uh, Tyler was that group was pretty explosive as well. So uh, I'd probably have to give the edge to Todd because he was a little more refined quarterback. And you're doing what um, what I always used to do uh, and continue to do. If there's a question of who should sit the bench when I'm coaching my son's team, I put my kid on the bench. That way, nobody hates me. So well done, Uncle Mark. I, I, I see what you're doing there. But yes, Todd Cottle, legend. Legend from Midway. Um, so obviously, um, Tyler's not here. He's supposed. He's like, uh, I don't know, he's got some something personal going on. I don't know, he couldn't make it, so he sent you instead. It's very, very fortunate. Uncle Mark, that today's episode is in fact titled Marks of Midway, Part 4, and we're going to have you on anyway. So this is great. You get a fill-in for him. You're more handsome than he is, and here you are. Look at that. Just blessing everybody that's watching the, the, the video version of the, the, the podcast. And so um, have you been watching uh, on YouTube, Uncle Mark, or are you primarily on the, uh, uh, the uh, podcast? Uh, we've been watching. Well, Nancy and I have been watching. I should say she brings them up, and I I watch along with her. Yeah, we've been keeping track. YouTube. YouTube yeah. Oh, wait, she said YouTube. So yeah, I guess she YouTube. wanted you to know that. I'm I'm impressed. Like like it turns yeah. out that your wife is super techy after all. Like we were we were worried once upon a time that you guys would never get to hear the podcast because you couldn't figure it out. And now not only could you get us on 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 Spotify or on Apple. Uh, you know, podcast, but also YouTube. Now you guys are, you guys are pretty hip. Yeah, we're, we're getting there slowly, but sure. love that. Broken news. Well, as we like to say, if it ain't broken, it ain't news. You heard that one, Uncle Mark? You heard that one? But breaking news is for before. tryhards and we no longer have the stamina for that kind of effort. So we take stories that have already been broken and share them with the folks at home at home. Have you heard about this, Uncle Mark? According to KansasHighSchoolFootballHistory.com, when you took over the Midway Eagles football program in 1985, was it five? Mm -hmm. 85? Um, 86 was my first year, yeah. 86, 
mm-hmm. the Eagles didn't lose very many games uh, from that point on to the continuation of this dominant 80s run. That year, I think that first 1985 year, um, what was your guys' record? Do you remember? I had it pulled up before, but I don't know. 86 or 85? 86. Your 86, we, were, we, we, we lost one game in 86. Mm. So you lost yeah. one whole game in 86. So we, we said last, in the Marks Midway 3, that dad, you know, legend. But I think you could make a case, a very strong case, perhaps an even more strong case, that Mark Martin is also a legend in the history of Kansas football coaching. I want to know, Uncle Mark, and we're skipping this whole like article thing because I want to get right into it. What was it like when you got to um, Midway and here's my dad who, you know, he's a, he's a certain kind of dude. He's a certain kind of dude. And here you've had all this success playing actual college football, which he didn't. And you roll up into, onto his coaching staff and you look at what he's doing, which he'd already had some success, right? Was there things that he was doing that you're like, as a guy that actually played at the college level, um, we need to change this and get better over here? Or did you roll up and say, this is kind of weird, but it kind of works? What was that like when you first started? When I first started, it was uh, more like, uh, this guy knows what he's doing. I'm just going to follow along, help Coach Leatherman and Coach Jewell and try to learn a few things. And fortunately, I was able to do that. So, Coach Leatherman, was he much help at all? <laughs> Jim Leatherman, uh, he was awesome. <laughs> he, he, he's great. <laughs> I don't know how much, you know, I'm not, uh, if you had him on, I'm sure he'd say he wasn't any help, but he was definitely help. He was the anchor, I should say, kind of keep the young coaches stable. Mm. See, we had that. We had uh, we had Tim Prawl to do that for, for Dad and I over here at St. Joe Christian, for sure, which you got to experience that for a year. And more on that later. Uh, but before we actually get to things that we remember, um, just looking back to this, you know, again, that website that I mentioned, it lists your guys' record. And from 1986, like all your records, until the time of uh, Tyler getting into high school, you guys won a lot of games. So looking back, was there a particular, like as I'm looking at this list, was there a particular year that kind of stands out that, uh, you know, that was special for any particular reason? I didn't, I didn't prep you for this question ahead of time. Was there any particular year that stands out, you know, for any reason? Whether, you know, whether it was the success, the talent of the kids, or maybe you did better than you thought you would, or maybe it was a year where, you know, your, your starting quarterback ate a whole bunch of pizza before a game and threw up, you know, at halftime. I don't know. Anything that just stick out from all this, all this Dominance I'm looking at here from all these years. Any, any particular st- season that sticks out in your memory? They all had their ups and downs. Each 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 team did. Uh, for instance, in a, each year, it seemed like when we got into playoff, we'd either have a a big injury or, the, or but usually it's just one and we get, can overcome it. But you know as well as I do in a small school, a small team that uh, you don't just put your number two in. You've got to put uh, your starting halfback into quarterback or whatever and then you change three or four things around so yeah we all we always had our challenges but it's always fun to try to figure it out and the kids always rose the occasion yeah that was always the thing even here at st joe christian when, whenever one guy would go down you're like okay well based on their attributes and their characteristics well this guy should now play this spot and that guy should probably move to that spot and pretty soon you've got six new starters the next week and a lot of times it occurs to you in the middle of that next game Maybe I should just put a guy that wasn't going to be very good at this one spot so the other seven could carry him. But, you know, you figured it out, yeah. obviously. Well, we, yeah, we, you had to do what you had to do. Yeah. Very good. We always say, yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You're the guest. Well, I always told the kids when something like that happened, where there's adversity, there's, there's also opportunity for somebody else. And that somebody else was ready to, to do their job. And we were always uh, thankful for that. Speaking of having people fill in for other people and do their job, you're doing great, Uncle Mark. We might just have to change up this show a little bit. I don't know that we need Tyler anymore. I think I think we found some a, a connection here between you and I. I don't know. Just a thought I had. Yeah, we've already been be doing it. You might be onto something. Yeah, and we've already been doing things we remember. But let's give Tracy Lindley a chance to sh- you know share her beautiful vo- vocal tones with everyone. The things we remember. Well, we're getting older. You're not. I am. We've already forgotten more than we ever knew, but some memories still cling to our brain parts. 
like the football, to the back of Todd Cottle's massive thighs as he hit the ball while running the 318 strong sweep for another touchdown. His, li- his thighs weren't that massive. Kevin Zeitz were, and I'm reading the read from when we did Marks of Midway. <laughs> didn't Kevin Zeitz have big thighs? Didn't he? Have, I mean, he had large legs, didn't he? Yeah, he his foundation was very strong. He had a very thighs and, and rear end. Is, yeah, he's a football guy. He knew how to squat. <laughs> This list includes memories from our time growing up in Kansas. Let's see just how well we can remember. In the Broken News segment, we learned that Mark Martin had a lot of wins. If you didn't already know that, well, welcome to the show. This must be your first time. I want to ask you a couple questions, Uncle Mark, and we're going to go a couple different ways with this. Let's start first with, again, when you first kind of came in and you mentioned what it was like, kind of jumping in on what Dad was doing, and, and what, was, what was it like for you, like on an emotional level, if you have any stories you want to add, what was it like for you, number one, uh, to uh, be hanging out with my dad because you guys became pretty close, but number two, basically jump right into coaching and already be a rock star and just win a bunch of games. Were you kind of like that rookie that gets drafted to a Super Bowl team and thinks, we're going to be here every year? Because it really seems like uh, you didn't really have any downtime. You hit the ground running and were already an instant success as a coach. Well, well, I I got the keys to the Cadillac. And I just tried not to crash. It's what the deal was. Um, but yeah, we I do have a so the very first season in '86, we went over there and there's some some people some magazine from New York out doing an article on eight man football for some reason. And they followed us. We had a 29 game winning streak or something like that going. Followed us up to to Nebraska and we uh, and we lost that game. I didn't invite him back ever. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I, I just remember during that game, that's the first time the, those kids had lost. Uh, I had kids come in at you know at uh, timeouts and said they weren't they they were just a complete unit. They were just so cohesive. And they asked coach, w- what can we do? You know, what can we do to you know? It wasn't any finger point. It wasn't anything. They were just just completely won and lost as a team. And I was really, really proud. I knew we had something special at that point. Was that what have been fall city? I know we played them a lot over the years. No, Sacred we Heart. went up to, uh, yeah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Sacred Heart that year. It was, uh, Odell, Nebraska, I think. They're probably pretty good. I would guess if they're able to beat you guys. In they were six Cause you guys were pretty good. They were, that de- year. They were decent. They were de- yeah. <laughs> decent. We well, only had one senior that year though. That hurts. I mean, yeah. to only lose one game with only one senior, I think that tells you a little bit about those uh, underclassmen and those juniors. Because those juniors right. did pretty good the next year, didn't they, as seniors? They did. That, that was that was a really enjoyable group. Neil and Thomas, and and uh, we just had uh, we had the Beck, one of the Beckers. You know, we had so many Beckers come through there. We had the youngest Becker, Pat, was our halfback, and of course Todd was the quarterback. So we had yeah, and then we had some. Really good uh, sophomores to go along. I mean, juniors go along with those sophomores. That, yeah, we we just hit the hit the ground running that season. We had to do special plays just to keep practices from getting too boring. You know, uh, we never used them hardly ever, but we we had them if we needed them. So then, you know, again, we're gonna kind of go back and forth here. But if you if you go ahead, you know, kind of fast forward to the '90s where mm-hmm. we were still very good, and I remember that's the culture. Uh, Tyler and I remember the most being the water boys, ball boys, you know, through kind of those nineties right. teams and won a lot of guy, a lot of games. You look through the record from the nineties, we're winning a lot more than we're losing. As a matter of fact, the nineties records remind me a lot of how things were during dad's run here at St. Joe Christian, where we were always dominating, but then, you know, you trip, get tripped up in the playoffs or, or, or lose a, a state championship or something like that. But kind of fast forward to the nineties. Now all of a sudden you're not winning the state championship every year. And, what was that like as a coach to kind of have all that success and, and just it's almost like the state championship felt like, you know, as you look back to the history, I don't know what it felt like live. I was like a two year old, uh, but it just, you know, it seemed like, you know, we're always going to win. And now all of a sudden you've got these great teams, but you're not winning. Um, maybe it's because Todd Cottle wasn't there anymore. Um, but what was that like? Because I'm a coach and I know what that feels like. And so I'm trying to ask from your perspective to let the folks who haven't coached at home kind of get a handle of, of, of what that's like. Or for you, was that there's no difference? Well, you know, as a coach, you you want to you have specific goals that you strive for. And we, we you know, those goals never changed. Sometimes uh, the talent level or the speed or, you know, whatever the case may be, or, or a critical injury here and there. I know we had a Mark Albers 
hurt his ACL and one year and that kind of threw us back a little bit. Well, we had some, some injuries, so is everybody, but yeah, we had things work against us, but you know, we were always trying to play like champions. If not, you know, maybe not get to the championship, but we were always had those championship uh, goals and all those, we had those in sight and we tried to keep those in sight. And, and even when we didn't win the state title, you know, we, we try, you know, as far as I'm concerned, most of those teams put forth a championship effort. Well, and we are a Kansas QB podcast. That's literally what we're entitled. And so, you know, we're all about quarterbacking because Tyler and I both played the position, uh, but also we're all about Kansas. And so, you know, Tyler's talked before and I experienced it also when I was, you know, and I, I lived in, I've actually lived in Kansas longer than he has. Just throwing that out there. Um, but, you know, just from being a Kansas boy, you know, farming community, all that. Um, what was special about um, just that area, you know, kind of the Bendina Denton area um, mm-hmm. back in those days and the kids that you were getting? What, what made them special um, in that? I mean, clearly they were because of all their success. But what made them special? I think the family, the family backgrounds of the community, uh, solid, you know, most of them went home to moms and dads, solid, solid home life. And that makes a big difference. And, uh, you know, with, with, uh, with that happening, it's, it's a lot easier. Oh, for sure. So, um, so here's another question for you then. Um, we had, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, the work ethic they have, I think is, uh, was second to none. Um, and, you know, and again, traditionally, those kids, as seniors, they were afraid to let you know, you're down. So the seniors would just keep that leadership role going and the work ethic they have in the community, in the community. A lot of times the kids would go throw hay in between two a days kind of thing. That's just the kind of kids they, we got, you know. And so, yeah, we had, we had kids that knew how to work and did a great job of that. So in 1999, when dad came over to St. Joe Christian and started uh, the football program here, and uh, there was this story that I've told before on, on this podcast and many times in class and in football practices at St. Joe Christian. There was a, there was a kid who uh, raised his hand and said, Coach, I'm not going to be at practice tomorrow. And I'm, Dad looked up at him and said, why is that? And he said, well, i got to help set up for my girlfriend's birthday party. Did, those 80s teams, did you ever get that from any of your starters? From our starters? Not that I can remember. And if I did, I'd put it out of my memory probably but no i i I know we didn't yeah they wouldn't do that well so here's the question that too something i'm wondering like let's i didn't really prepare for this but i'm getting all of the questions out that i've been wondering for forever and i've got you nailed down on this podcast and you promised to go to the end of it so you can't get out of it and you have to answer all these questions what did you do in the late 80s that if i did today in the 2020s i would probably get fired for uh, well, we worked extremely hard and in the heat, of, and not, we usually tried to go morning or an evening, even back then, but we worked extremely, extremely hard. We, yeah, I, I don't know. Even, even at the end of my career, we didn't push kids like we did you know, at the beginning of the career. And maybe that's, you know, you know, of course, you know, with the weight, weight conditioning and weight and uh, fitness conditioning programs that maybe I didn't feel I needed to so much, but uh, we pushed them really hard and, and they responded. I mean, and you know, we, we, we checked, we, we would test their manhood. Sometimes we'd, we'd challenge them. We challenge them pretty hard a lot of times. So yeah, some of the things we did might be a little sketchy right now. Yeah, not that you're doing anything bad, but just in today's culture, no. you just can't get away with it anymore. It's because we're overly protective. I'm going to say it. I just said it. We're overly protective, but whatever. Um, did you ever say that line from Remember the Titans? Like when it's someone asks for water and you say, no, son, water makes you weak. Did you ever, did you ever say that? No, I, I really never. No, even even when at the beginning, we never... We, we always had water available for the kids. That's for sure. We, we kept them safe. We want, we're always, we had their best interests in mind. All right. So we're getting ready to leave the eighties. Is there anything to kind of encapsulate or recap the eighties? Again, we already did Mark's the Midway three, where we talked about kind of the starting of the program. Dad hands the baton off to you. Actually, you were there already carrying the baton with him. 
prior to him handing it off and, and, and helping uh, dad, dad, in dad's words, um, I think he said, and again, this is not a knock on Jim Leatherman because he was the glue that held you guys together. Um, you know, the, the, the father figure for you guys as, as you ran this organization. Um, but he says that when you first came over, it was like, wow, all right, somebody that I can trust to, uh, I can turn things over to, like a real football coach. And he said that just did uh, a lot for you guys uh, in your program. Um, before we leave the 80s, is there anything else, um, thoughts on, on kind of the late 80s? Because we're going to go into the 90s next. So uh, any other thoughts to wrap up the 80s? Man, I, I would just, uh, we had some great coaches. I had some great assistant coaches. You know, some of the kids that played in the, uh, during that era came back to help. So I'd say our, our coaches, whoever they were, they gave us their all. And just like the kids and just like, the, you know, we expected. And they they, they didn't uh, disappoint. I know Jim Holling came back. He's really fun. I mean, Gary, Gary Smith and Perry Smith were my two go-to assistants. They helped help at in uh, cr critical times and yeah we had a lot of good assistants as well as good players with yeah. great attitudes yeah jim holling <laughs> actually helped for uh, a year as much as he could uh with central christian that first year when we first started and, oh, and yeah. danny uh yeah. danny nigus was out there for for a year with us and so some of those guys came to central christian yeah. to help too um okay before we leave i guess i have one more question uh better assistant coach uh, gary smith or mark jewell oh man i <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching the YouTube video or you're listening at home and you're not watching the YouTube video, Mark Martin has frozen. And I don't I have a conspiracy theory. I think he froze on purpose. I think he I think he hit the hang up button so he wouldn't have to answer that question. So just one moment while we get uh, Coach Martin back. All right. You ready? Yes. All right, we got Coach Martin back. And since he went through such great lengths to uh, make sure you wouldn't have to answer that last question, we'll move on to something else. So originally, when we, when we planned this episode, Tyler and I, we wanted to ask you about the time frame that we remember the most. And that's those 90s, those teams of the 90s. And, and we mentioned some of the names that we remember. It's kind of like Tecmo Super Bowl. We know all of the quarterbacks and running backs and wide receivers that played in 1989 because... We played that game so much that we, we memorized everyone in the league. So when we think back to the 90s, of course, we can name off running backs. We can name off a lot of the quarterbacks and things. But um, the 90s, like we mentioned, was a, still a fantastic decade in, in Midway Denton Eagles uh, history. And I think any of us coaches would gladly take you know the, the success that you guys had in the 90s um, uh, and just the athletes that you had and the success you were able to have with them. What are some some names that stick out to you, like some of the, some of the good players. We're not going to ask you to put together an all decade team because you know, then people get right. their feelings hurt, you know, and whatever. And yeah. coach Martin forgot about me. Disclaimer folks. Uh, Tyler always says that, that, that Mark Martin has forgotten more about football than Tyler will ever know about football. And what that means is he might not remember your name right now. Um, so you're still special. You're still special. If you listen to this and he doesn't mention you, uh, just make sure you mention Jeremy Blanton because he does actually listen to this. Um, you know, <laughs> you're still special. So go ahead. What are some names that you remember? Because I just want to sit here and, and hear the names and remember with you. So go ahead, Uncle Mark. Well, I, I want to emphasize that I apologize for anybody that I forget because I – I'll I'll forget a lot. No, he did it again. He did it again. He didn't want to have to say names, and so he, he cut out again. We'll get him back. We'll get him back. He's back. He's back. We got Uncle Mark back, and look who else we found. There's Tyler Martin. Uh, Tyler, you have to know that your dad did such a great job with the uh, Rightum Cowboy. Like uh, we had a conversation. <laughs> we were talking about maybe so moving you out. I don't know. I'll um, I can say I'm replaced. Okay. I'm yeah. not surprised. But well, at least okay. for the rest of this episode, you are. We had just got, we talked about the 80s and we just got into the 90s. And I'd asked your dad, I said, okay. what are some of the names that you remember uh, from the 90s? Because you and I, Tyler, we, we wanted to ask him this because we wanted to just sit and listen and remember and just enjoy going down memory lane. He and I, just while we were, uh, <clears throat> while I was trying to get him back up and I was, we we're talking on the audio side. Um, he mentioned some names, and it reminded some me of some names. I don't know if they were good at football. I just remember them because uh, you know we were their water boys. Well, so, well, I was gonna say that's the the thing about the '90s. Even though the '80s dominated like the championships, the '90s were when we came into being a part of the team. 
as 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 we saw it. Yeah, we were part uh, of the team. And so those so these names through the nineties are the ones that we remember probably more than anybody else. Mm. All right. We've built it up. We've built it up now. Uncle Mark, what do you got for us? What are some names you remember? Just give it to us. Some, some of the some of the good players from the nineties that you remember. Well, Jason and Toby's group, Mark Helmstetter and that group was that they, they, they like I said before, they went to 92 yeah. and we had, uh, after that too, they had a group, uh, well, Eric Meredith who had a car accident and, uh, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Franken's the Franken boys at that. Mm, pause. The Franken boys what we really love good, about yeah. the Franken's not only did they take us to a, uh, a a championship game in 1992 because that was Chris was the quarterback that year right mm-hmm. uh, but yep. also they let us borrow Contra for our uh, our, our, oh. our Nintendo because they live right next to the Winchesters and and I remember even going up to their house one time and playing with them on their Nintendo yes. and boy weren't we cool over at the Franken Boys yes. house yeah that's a, that's an rem- awesome family <laughs> I remember going over there and. So I remember of all of the three Franken boys, um, Chris was the one that always seemed like the leader. That's why he was the quarterback, but he wasn't the biggest. Jody had the best spin. Jody had the best spin move in eight man history. And then Corey, I remember we went to, we adopted, uh, he was playing linebacker and we put him at, you guys say we, you guys put him at nose guard his senior year, I think and playing a three, two, and he had a sack against, I want to say Axel, somebody, it was a big game. He had a sack and he came up. This was when uh, Neil Smith was still playing for the chiefs Mm -hmm. and Corey had a sack and came up and did the home run swing like Neil Smith used to do. (laughs) What did Mark Martin think of that? (laughs) Well, I I Uh, remember thinking on the side. No, I remember thinking on the sideline, oh no, he's going to get in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you knew. You knew even then. Hey, my my favorite thing about Jody Franken is when my senior year, we had a really good basketball team at St. Joe Christian, and I sprained my ankle in the postseason um, after regionals, and he was the guy that got me ready to play in the Civic Arena game against Jefferson, which we lost by four, uh, but but I got to see him a lot uh, that week, and so he, he gave me a chance to at least play in the game, so got to like Jody Franken, but, uh, but we interrupted you. Keep going there, Uncle Mark. Oh, um, Jason Greider, uh, Toby Rush, um, Mark Helmstetter, trying to think of Brandon Crockett, I think was with that group. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, then Br- Br- Brandon Aaron, Crockett. Had Aaron a, Albert. Had, Brandon Crockett had a sweet mullet. Well, he had a rat tail. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even tell this on you. <laughs> but on him, but, I asked, you know, we at that point, team, you know, looking like a team was probably bigger than it needed to be back then to me, but I wanted to be a team all the way around. So I had told the coach, I uh, told the kids not to uh, be an individual on your whatever you do, you know, whether it be haircuts or whatever. Um, and he had this rat tail come down. <laughs> Before the first game, I asked him to get it cut before the first game he came to the locker room with it with it on and uh, so i said that's too bad brandon and he said what you can't play tonight <laughs> and he's and so anyway before the game started he had it cut off and everything was good he's he's a pretty good player he's 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 a, pretty, he's a good kid i like him <laughs> so, so you, you want to be a team in all areas, especially this area right back here. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have, anymore, that would not have been a big deal to me anymore, but I guess I was a little more uh... – yeah. Anyway, well, we'll let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I love this stuff. All right, yeah, who else? Give us some more names. Um, let's see. Well, we have uh, Jeremy Blanton. Uh, he was our quarterback for a year or two after Mark got hurt. Um, trying to think of Keith Pikey, you mentioned him earlier. Joey McConaughey. Okay, pause, uh, pause, 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 pause. We got to go mm-hmm. back. Yeah, yeah, and I remember Joey McConaughey. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good name. That's a good name right there. Um, Keith Piker. Um, yeah, well, Keith. Yeah. The only thing anybody knows about Keith Piker that listened to this podcast is that my dad yelled at him one time for for giving up outside contain. He's a pretty good player, right? I mean, that doesn't define and, his 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 time as a football player or the Midway Eagles. Yeah, I mean. I mean 
being yelled at by one of the coaches is not that unusual there. Um, <laughs> we usually we usually made sure you knew what you were doing, you know, trying to and patch it up before we went to the locker room. So yeah, yeah. there we go. All right, I, I'm not surprised. Continue. Yeah, continue. <laughs> Just a good, probably a friendly reminder not to give up the outside. I'm guessing. I, I lied. Not continue. Question. Who who was the bigger yeller? Like who was more likely to fly off the handle? Mark Jewell or Mark Martin? Fly off the handle. Like, like I don't think really we give him a handle. good tongue lashing. Yeah, probably your dad was probably a little more at that and I would in practice I might challenge him severely uh, a few times, but your dad would uh, definitely let him know if something was going wrong or right. I have to say, I came back and filmed, I don't even remember why, uh, Donovan West versus Troy. Maybe I just want to give my uh, my video camera a, a good workout. But I came to Troy, this is at, you know, as I'm at Central Christian, I brought my video camera, you're coaching Donovan West, and I remember going on the sidelines and filming from, from your sideline, and I just remember being like, I forgot how intense Uncle Mark is. You're right, I don't think you yelled like that, but you were intense. Like, you were like, like, like I, I mean, if you did, if I didn't know you, I wasn't going to talk to you. But I knew you, so I did. But uh, can, yeah, can I interject just a little bit here? Um, because your dad coached offense and defensive side. Dad, you've coached both the offensive and defense. But kind of when we were going through, um, it felt like now as a coach that Mark had more of the offensive mind and you had more of the defensive mindset where and, and it comes honestly as you were i don't know if you guys talked about this is that we didn't was the all all american in college um but as a hard-hitting safety in college that was it, that's what always felt like to me that if you're not going to play with the intensity that i played with or at least try to get there, then we need to find somebody else to do the job. And we've talked, our kids call your dad the Joker. Hmm. The, dad, my dad, now like we're just saying dad all the time. My dad didn't turn off the intensity from the time the coin got flipped until the final whistle. And maybe then even into talking to the team after. And that was something I always appreciated about you and that I, that I try to do now that there's a, a deep in, defensive mindset or a football mind, whatever you want to call it, that you always possessed that I think people to this day still can look back and, and say the same things. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I did. Yeah, you, the coin coin gets tossed. I'm ready to go, kind of. Mm. And and that's all competitor. All good competitors are like that. That's why we had so much success because we had a lot of good competitors that mm. were you know would flip that switch when you hit the field and let's go kind of mentality. And that's I think that's what Tyler's referring to probably. Yeah, one of my favorite things. Um, clips because i keep a bunch of different clips i'm a video guy and we did this thing at saint joe christian the year that you helped us at saint joe christian uncle mark um it was behind the scenes with dr prawl with tim prawl i don't know if you remember this uh, and we basically yeah, yeah. had mike modlin in between filming the field he would then turn and just like catch whatever was going on with coaches and the players and tim interacting and one of my favorite clips from that it's this clip where all four of us are standing in a line so there's, there's Dr. Prawl, then there's you, then there's me, and then there's dad. And at the same time, we're all saying something different to somebody on the field. Like, like it just sounds like complete chaos. And, and you're like going, here, here. And, and dad's like, oh, yeah, you have another I'm, I'm like, back up, back up. And Tim's like, what are you doing? And it's like, how in the world did these players ever have any idea what they were supposed to do? And that's what they're hearing from the sidelines. Well, I think you're onto something there, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> poor, All right, poorly coached. <laughs> That's poorly, yeah, poor coaching. Yeah, that that Mark Jewell is the head coach at the time. You should have put, you know, figured that one out. Um, so, all right, back to the '90s. We, 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 you know, we said, is there any other names on that list that that Tyler and I can just sit and just, you know, just just reminisce about with you? Well, yeah, you, you probably remember the Jeremy Blanton's time there. I'm guessing he was 
he was well you were probably almost in junior high at that point weren't you yeah yeah we were we would be we were we've been seventh, seventh grade seventh grade when he, yeah when he was yeah uh -huh. yeah and, and he played that, island didn't he mm -hmm. now after that jared Furman and that group came through that was a good group that was a nice group that yeah, that, that uh, was one of those yeah. groups that was decimated by injuries and oh, illness yeah. at the end of the year. Matt, Matt yeah. Pally, our friend Matt, when we talked with him, we, we briefly mm -hmm. talked about that year and, and something very hurtful that Tyler said to Matt at the end of that season. But w hold on right there because we're going to come back to you just to talk specifically about uh, 1990 or 1998 through 2000 and just that's gonna be its okay. own little podcast uh, we're gonna see if we can get our friends uh brett minor and darren roberts and some others that we've talked oh, to good. uh on and, and, that, and talk about their experiences that 97 season ended at center mm -hmm. they won it the, that it? year yeah they, they won it that year and we should have beat them we had a fumble exchange sorry jeremy to do this now but we had a fumble <laughs> exchange on a we called it draw uh, to Jared, mm -hmm. I don't remember what the name of the play was, and I mean this hole was bigger than Dad's <laughs> new big pickup truck that he has, and oh I thought we were going to walk in and win the game right at the end. Oh, I'd and, forgotten ah, about that game until you're just yeah, now talking about it. No. Oh, yes, yeah, Sinner. Uh, we'll, right. we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about we'll talk about the halftime speeches off air, um, <laughs> but yeah. that. That uh, that group was a fun group to be a part of. And I remember being there like, I, I can't wait to, I'm almost there one more year and then I'll be there. And that group was kind of that, I, I'm excited to be a Midway Eagle. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, Mark Martin, we are so thrilled that you joined us here today. And we are coming down here to the very end. Anything else, any other summary statements or anything we left off that you wanted to mention, but uh, we didn't ask you about uh, before we go here? I'm sure there's plenty of kids that I could have, should have, and I wish I would have mentioned, but uh, maybe another time. All right, good. Well, I appreciate, we're not going I appreciate you guys. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. <laughs> appreciate you. We appreciate you. Um, last question before we let you go. I want to I want to get the serious one out there first to give you a chance to say something. Uh, last question. Um, in the history of Midway Eagles football, there have been some pretty fantastic support staff, players, you know, Who's your favorite water boy? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I think Becky, probably Becky and Kevin. Uh, <laughs> water, water person for Becky. Oh, well, wait, you that does it for too. things that we remember. Did you guys help? <laughs> <laughs> Becky was the wrong answer. Well, that does it for things we remember. As we reach 1992. Two in the Midway Eagles football dynasty of life. I don't know. I didn't write anything for this one. We just went off the cuff today. Uh, we're just thrilled that we remembered something. Kansas QB is a production of the Jewel Media Podcasting Network. And before we go, we want to thank Tracy of Tracy Lindley Voiceovers for the way to professional audio. And also we want to thank Tyler and Uncle Mark for taking time in their busy schedules to talk to us about the marks of Midway for the fourth time. Can't wait for five. Mm, can't wait for five. And number five, again, we're going to talk about that classic 2000s run. I don't remember where that's at. I don't remember that's at on the, our list, but it's on the list. Well, that's enough of that. For Tyler, for Uncle Mark, and for myself, Steve, we want to wish you big fun in your small town. God dance up, Mark. There it is. Oh, folks, you gotta look at the YouTube video for this one!